Hi, and welcome to another HitFilm video. Today I'll be showing you my top 5 effects in HitFilm. Before we begin this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you want more content like this, and follow me on Twitter at shiny underscore films. But let's get right on into the video. Today I'm going to show you 5 effects that I've put in this list, they're not in any kind of order, or any for any real reason that I put them in here, other than they're just really cool, or they're really useful and I use them all the time. This video is also not going to be some kind of step-by-step -step tutorial, instead it's kind of more of a laid-back, uh, relaxed video just showing you some of these effects. And I'll be using effects that are both in the Pro and the Express version, so if you own the Express version but not the Pro version, don't worry, I've got effects in here for you as well. So let's start off with the first effect, which is the light sword effect. I really like this effect because for me it's just the coolest effect in HitFilm, and the way that HitFilm implements it is actually really easy to use. As you can see here, I've got uh, the original image on the left here, and the composited image on the right. And I've done a lot of more things than just the light sword effect, as you can see I've got all of this going as well, but as you can see the actual light sword effect is really cool. Now this is the Light Sword Ultra effect, and it's only available in the Pro version of HitFilm, but if you have the Express version of HitFilm, you should be able to use the Light Sword effect in there as well, which works really similarly. I won't go over a full tutorial, step by step of how to use it, but what you can do is animate the hilt and the tip positions, I've used two points and parented them, uh, to, just to make it easier with my light flares and everything else. And there are, as you can see in the Ultra effect, a whole ton of things that you can customize, distortion, uh, and all kinds of things. And the best thing about the light sword effect is that you have two points. So as you can see, if I search up light sword, and yes, I have this really cool uh, new screen capture thing where you can see what I tab into my keyboard. So if I do shortcuts or things, you can see what I'm typing. Uh, but if you see light sword under the generate tab, there are the normal light sword effects as well as the uh, light sword ultra effects, but each of those has three. You have glow onlys, as well as two point auto and two point manual, and four point manual, sorry. Four point manual gets really tricky because you have to use four points, but if you use two point auto, it automatically um, changes the width to go along with the motion of your light sword. So for example, if I just, at this frame, adjust the tip so that it's wildly down here, you'll notice it starts to blur the actual lightsaber so that it becomes thicker, uh, to compensate for the motion blur. And that's actually a really cool effect. It's something that I've only seen done in HitFilm, and it's actually just super useful. So uh, yeah, there you go. And of course, I have Light Flares effect, which is also one of my favorite effects in HitFilm. Um, and I've used that uh, parented to the hilt as well. And as well, I've just got some uh, basic brightening with the curves, as well as some brightness and some hue uh, just to give the light sword some glow around everything. But with all of that being said, that's the first effect that I really like in HitFilm. You'll notice it's more of a compositing effect. Now I'm going to move on to some more editing effects as well. So the one that I'm going to use next is CineStyle. CineStyle is for a beginners basically, uh, which is one reason that I think it should be in the Express version of HitFilm, but unfortunately it's only in the Pro version. But this is a really cool effect because it automatically applies uh, what we call a cinematic look to your footage. So if you just search up for CineStyle and drag it on, you'll notice it's made some brightness adjustments, added this vignette, some color adjustments, and not only is it giving you this instant cinematic kind of look, uh, if you go into controls and you open up the CineStyle effect, uh, you'll notice that actually there's a whole ton of adjustment as well. And you can see the different parts of the effect that they've applied. So you can so you can get loads of presets, uh, but you can probably just leave it on default. And just things like the S-curve for contrast, the color adjustment. Um, you can also go down into the color adjustment sh settings. And at the moment the hue is 35, which means it kind of brings this yellow and teal look. But you can always just change it and go for a completely different look. As well as this, you've got the letterbox, which changes the aspect ratio with a built-in offset, if it doesn't look the way you want it. And of course, you've got some grain and this really strong vignette, which I tend to uh, bring down. So that's the CineStyle effect, but something I also really like about HitFilm is they've also added, as you might have seen before, the classic CineStyle effect, which is really useful for adding a more vintage classic look. Now, at the moment, when you apply the effect, you'll notice it just adds a little bit of film grain, 
But if you go down, open the effect, uh, and in the presets, select an effect, uh, for example, Toll of the Sea here, it kind of applies that uh, film LUT uh, from, that, uh, from that film. And you can see it's got this really nice uh, vintage look. You can adjust, same as the normal cine style, the S-curve for contrast, as well as uh, general exposure and saturation. But here you've also got these black and white tint values, which kind of give you the, that greeny uh, look, uh, greeny and uh, cream look that we have here. And also you can customize things, you know, based on channels as well. So for example, if I just want to bring the green density down, we've got a more natural look. And you know, I really like that. It doesn't actually detract from it, but it gives this really nice uh, vintage look, which I think is really cool. The next effect is LUTs. So you might have heard of LUTs used uh, in all kinds of other programs like Adobe Premiere, etc. And HitFilm uh, has, has LUT capability as well. So all you have to do is search up for the LUT effect and just drag it onto your video. As you can see, I've already got um, one LUT effect there. And it's really simple. All you have to do is uh, direct your HitFilm to the LUT file that you want to use. And a LUT file, if you don't know, is a lookup table. Basically, it's a pre-applied color grade uh, that you can download from, say, the internet um, and just apply it onto your footage. This is really great if you want to kind of replicate a certain look from a film, kind of like the classic cine style. There's not much control with this lot effect, but of course, it's a lot effect, so it's just going to be super useful. As you can see, I've got this lot effect, and it immediately applies this orange uh, teal kind of look uh, to our footage, which I really like. And it works really well on this footage especially, but you can see on this footage as well, it applies that same kind of uh, cyan blue look uh, to our footage as well. So that's LUTs and Cine Style, two really nice color grading effects. Uh, our next effect is actually going to be Lens Blur. Now Lens Blur is really interesting because um, not only is does it blur your image, but there's a ton of creative stuff that you can do with it as well. So to just show you, if I just apply the normal blur effect, just a normal blur, then it'll blur the, the video, but it'll be in this kind of uh, Gaussian blur, uh, not very uh, beautiful kind of style. But if we apply lens blur, then it'll automatically apply all those light effects and that bokeh that we get when we uh, have an out of focus area in our lens. So as you can see here, we have a much nicer effect. If we increase the radius, we get a much cooler effect. But do note that of course, lens blur takes a lot more time to render than say the normal blur effect. But the lens blur effect doesn't stop there. Something that I really like about the lens blur effect uh, is actually the fact that you can use maps uh, as source layers as well. And by the way, the lens blur effect also comes in the express version of HitFilm, so you don't need to worry about having the pro version. All of this capability uh, comes in the express version as well, which is really cool. So the lens blur map, uh, as you can see, uh, I'm, I've got this comp over here, which just contains one plane layer with two color gradients, uh, which give it this, this black band in the middle with these white areas here. And the aim of this is going to be to have a black area in the middle where everything's in focus and white areas on the top and bottom where everything is not in focus. Now where we have this kind of fake depth effect in our video. So what we can do is use the map uh, in our video. So I've got the comp shot down here below the layer. You can hide it as well if you want. And I'm just gonna select the source layer to be that comp shot. And if you select the reset the source channel, by default it's alpha but we can change it to luminance because we've used black and white values in our map. And no, you'll notice we already have this, this kind of band here, down here where it's in focus, uh, but in our lens blur map, it was kind of a little bit higher, and the reason for that is the focal distance is by, uh, by default kind of a little bit off, so just reset that, and we've got a really cool lens blur effect. And you can even keyframe this effect to kind of rack focus. So I'll show you now, if I just uh, set the, the focus to be somewhere up the front here, so that looks pretty in focus, I'm gonna set a keyframe there and move say here, and if we just adjust the focal distance, we can see it's created this really cool rack focus effect. It's a little bit laggy when we play it back in real time, but you'll notice it creates this really cool uh, effect, which I really like. So that's just one really cool thing that you can do with the lens blur, you can create uh, kind of a fake shallow depth of field, or you can use it for uh, motion graphics and that kind of purpose as well if you want. Anyway, enough with the lens blur effect, now it's time to move on to my final effect, and that's the gunfire effect. 
There are also a lot of other effects that I really like, such as lighting and electricity, which didn't kind of make the cut here. But the thing I like about this effect is that it's fully 3D, and there are a lot of a really cool 3D effects in here. So these are all some of the quick 3D effects. But if you notice, we drag the uh, fire explosion on, it just looks super fake. So I never use that, and I don't recommend you use it. Instead, what I recommend you use uh, is the gunfire effect. Now the gunfire effect actually isn't qu in quick 3D, it's in particles and simulations. And some of this stuff is a lot better. The atomic particle effect is also a really cool effect, which you can just do so much with. Uh, but I'm just going to show you the gunfire effect. So I'm just going to open up the controls here. And in the transform, if we adjust the rotation on the Y, for example, you'll notice how the gunfire flare is rotating in full 3D. And that means that if you have an animated shot uh, with the, the gun moving around in 3D a lot, then you won't have to switch between multiple uh, muzzle fire assets that you found from a website or something. You'll have this built-in effect, which is actually super customizable as well. So for example, if I just move this into place here, and I can just scale it and rotate it, to fit uh, my project here. As you can see in the texture here, there are a whole ton of ones to choose from, uh, for low light situations and, and high light and daylight situations as well. So uh, yeah, it's just really customizable. And of course it's in full 3D, so you can uh, use it to track to objects and move them around in full 3D, which is just really useful. So there are my top picks for the best effects in HitFilm. Uh, there are obviously a ton of other ones that I didn't mention in this video or did mention, but uh, these are just some that I really like because they're really cool or they're just really useful. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. If you did enjoy them, be sure to hit the like button and of course subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Twitter at shiny underscore films. I'll see you in the next video. Stay shiny.